Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will actually study the space of bilinear forms on a given vector space and then we will relate uh, this with uh, the theory of uh, representations of G. So, uh, let us uh, actually begin with uh, some general dis discussions. So, let us take V being uh, just a finite dimensional vector space. Again, we will work over only complex numbers. So, we can actually construct the space of bilinear forms. Let us denote it by B A L of V. So, this is the space of all bilinear forms on capital V. So, what does it mean? That means, it is a map from V cross V to C. It is linear in, in both variables. Okay. So, there are two variables, first and second variable. So, in both variables, B is actually just linear. So, one can also actually talk about K by linear forms, okay. but here we are going to only uh, talk about uh, by two variable yeah, by linear forms, K linear forms. Here we will talk about uh, by linear forms. So, now uh, we have this uh, natural actually isomorphism between the uh, bilinear forms on this uh, home space. So, if we take this bilinear forms, so then we can easily find this natural isomorphism between home V comma V star to this uh, bilinear forms, forms of V. So, what is this natural map? So, given any B, you just map to what is called this B tilde. So, which is a map from V to V star. So, it is the evaluation map. Basically, this is the evaluation map. So, you basically evaluate, take the evaluation. So, that means you take V and then send it to B V comma dash. So, this is the evaluation with respect to this uh, map B. Okay. So, this is indeed isomorphism. So, that is uh, easy to verify. Okay. So, I will leave it as exercise. So, this is a, this is a vector space I suppose. So, now uh, what we are going to do like uh, we are going to actually uh, use this natural isomorphism and then uh, uh, define uh, G action on this uh, B A L of V. Uh, if we start with the model uh, V. Okay. So, suppose uh, V is a G module, then that implies that this home V V star is a G module. Okay. So, that is because, so again this is all C linear maps from V to V star. So, V is G module, V star is G module. So, home V comma V star is G module. So, now use this uh, isomorphism and then using this isomorphism just pull back the action of G to this uh, B A L of V. Okay. So, the pullback uh, if you just work it out it is going to be okay, or you can actually directly verify. Uh, so, we have this G action G act on this B A L of V via this following assignment x b is defined to be x b of v comma v dash is exactly equal to minus b x v v dash minus b v x v dash and uh, this is for all v v dash in v and x in g and b in b a l of v. So, this is the formula that you get if you actually pull back uh, the action of G that you, that you define on this home V comma V star. So, I will leave it to you to check or one can directly check that once you define uh, this uh, G action using this star, then B A L of V becomes actually G module and the natural map that we have defined here, this evolution map, this is indeed G module isomorphism. So, this is a G module isomorphism. Okay. So, now uh, we have the following isomorphisms. 
So this B I L of V. So this is naturally isomorphic to home V comma V star as a G module. Okay. Now this is you know that it is naturally isomorphic to V star tensor V star. So this is again G module as well. So, so recall we proved that if you take uh, V star tensor W that is naturally isomorphic to home V comma W. Okay. So, that is why you are getting this isomorphism. Again this isomorphism is also like used there is a natural isomorphism as vector spaces. You can use the action of G on the left side to pull back the action of action on the right side. That is how you write down the formula for the home V comma W. So, that is uh, similar uh, techniques that we will use here as well. So, now uh, let us actually uh, try to understand this isomorphisms, but before that uh, let us uh, define some important uh, uh, terminologies. Okay. So, given a representation we can always talk about uh, what is called invariant vector. Okay. So, let me just uh, make a side note. So, if G V is a G module, then a vector okay, V in capital V, again we want it to be non-zero. So, 0 means uh, it is okay, it is already invariant vector. So, given a non-zero vector is said to be invariant vector if the action of G just kills this vector. So, that means it should be in the kernel. Okay. There is this uh, natural map that is defined from G to G L of V via the representation. Okay. And if you take this vector V, okay, so that should be killed by all the images of this G. Okay, if you take this x and then look at phi of x, phi of x v should be 0 for all x in g. So, that means this v is in the kernel of this phi of x for all x in g. So, that is what called invariant vector means. Now, using this terminology one can actually define what is called invariant bilinear form. So, here is the definition. So, g invariant bilinear form which is very very important notion. Okay. So, what this means? It is just a bilinear form which is actually invariant vector of the this natural model B A L of V. Okay. So, a form B which is from V cross V to C is said to be G invariant if this is indeed uh, actually invariant vector okay, for the representation B A L of V. If we rewrite that, that means so X B should be 0 for all X in G. So, this is if and only if we can see that X B when you apply it on V V dash that should be 0 for all x in g and v v dash in capital V. So, which can be rewritten as when you take this is exactly minus b x v v dash plus b v x v dash. Okay. So, this quantity should be 0. So, that means it is called g invariant vector then this quantity you demand it to be 0. So, B x v v dash plus B v x v dash should be equal to 0 for all v v dash in v and x in g. So, that is what uh, invariant form means. So, here is the natural uh, characterization for this invariant forms. So, these invariant forms actually immediately gives us uh, G module maps from V to V star. Okay. If we start with, so let me call it as exercise, it is easy to do. 
okay. So, if we start with B being G invariant form, so which is invariant vector inside this representation, then if and only if, okay, you have this B tilde which is a map from V to V star, which is given by V to B of V comma dash, okay. So, this map should be a G module map is a G module. Indeed, the condition that we have here, okay, if you rewrite that condition, you get exactly this, okay. Let us rewrite and see. So, B x v v dash should be exactly equal to minus B v comma x v dash. So, what is the meaning of B tilde being G module map? So, that means if we take B tilde of x v that should be exactly x B tilde of v, okay. So, let us rewrite this. So, B tilde x v, so this is again a form on v star. So, we evaluate on v dash and then see. So, this is exactly by definition B x v v dash, okay, because v is mapped to B of v comma dash. So, now on the other hand, what is x b tilde of v? So, when you apply this on v dash, so x b tilde, remember that how the action of uh, uh, G defined on the dual, okay. So, then you can easily see that. So, this is exactly equal to x dot b applied on v dash on v dash, okay. Because b tilde of v is b v dash. So, that is what it means. So, now if you think about it, x dot f of v is defined to be minus f of x v. So, this is how we do in the dual, the action of g defined on the dual. So, that means this is exactly equal to minus b v comma x v dash, okay. So, that means you are demanding that this thing is same as this thing. B x v v dash is same as minus B v x v dash. So, that is why whenever B is G invariant form, then B tilde becomes G module map. So, it becomes if and only if. So, this is actually very important observation, this we will use it repeatedly. Okay. So, now uh, we can go back to the general uh, bilinear forms. Okay. So, we can define what is called non-degeneracy. So, given bilinear form is said to be non-degenerate, non said to be non-degenerate, then look at this B tilde. So, that map which is from V to V star given by V goes to B of V comma dash. So, this should be isomorphs. Okay. So, this is the definition of non-degeneracy. So, there are many characterizations for non-degeneracy. This is one of the characterization, okay. So, for example, what one can actually prove? So, this B tilde being uh, isomorphism, same as saying that, okay. So, B tilde is an isomorphism, same as saying that. So, there is no element actually that is killed by by applying this B V. Okay. So, B V comma W is 0 for all W in V implies that V is 0. Okay. It is indeed if and only if. So, these statements are equivalent. Now, if we take actually uh, some basis and then look at it is actually there will be a dual basis with respect to 
uh, the form that is given by B. Okay. So, if we start with the basis V1 etcetera Vn, so which is the basis of V. So, then there exist another basis which is the dual such that this uh, B of V i V j star okay. So, this is exactly going to be just delta h. So, there is another basis of capital V such that this is going to be exactly delta h. So, so basically uh, what one can say okay so maybe that uh, there is another characterization which we will call it 3 dash so if you fix a basis v1 etc vn of capital v basis of capital v if you look at the matrix formed by this b v i v j okay this matrix should be invertible so, this is is invertible. Okay. So, all this actually are equivalent 0 is B is not degenerate. So, you can take any one of them as definitions. Okay. The most important thing is uh, this 3. So, we will actually prove uh, the version of this okay but we will actually kind of do it for the symmetric uh, bilinear form so then one can actually identify uh, vi with uh, vi star okay so let's prove that proportion so let us start with uh, symmetric non degenerate bilinear form symmetric non degenerate bilinear form on given vector space v okay so then we can actually find a basis v1 etc vn of capital v such that when you apply this b v i v j you get exactly the conical delta h. So, here given basis you are able to find dual basis, okay. but here we are saying that there is a basis, it is a dual to itself. So, now the second statement if we assume that B is G invariant, okay. so then we have this characterization. So, if and only if so, with respect to the basis that we have here in 1, with respect to the basis in 1, so look at the matrix elements that corresponds to the G. Okay. So, look, look at matrix representation of elements of G, so with respect to this basis. Okay. So, all of them must lie inside S O N, they all lie inside S O N. So, let us prove this. Uh, so, the proof is by induction. Okay. So, we have to just to set up the induction then uh, immediately we will get that uh, there is such basis. The second one is just uh, rewriting the definition. So, let us prove. So, by induction we can assume that okay, up to n minus 1 the statement first statement is true. So, to begin the induction hypothesis yeah, for the 0 dimensional space there is nothing to prove. So, that is the 0 space we do not need to prove anything. Uh, let us assume that we have n which is greater than or equal to 1. Now, we just assume that B being non-zero form. Okay. So, this is non-zero symmetric uh, non-degenerate form. For zero form there is nothing to prove. Okay. So, since uh, B is non-zero, so since B is non-zero, there exist V in V such that B of V comma V is non-zero. So, one way to get it, uh, so we are working with the symmetric form. 
So, note that if we apply B V plus W V plus W. So, this is going to be exactly equal to B of V comma V plus twice B of V comma W plus B of W W. So, just to use the linearity and then rewrite everything. So, now this implies B of V comma W can be written as of times B of V plus W comma V plus W minus B of V comma V minus B of W comma W. So, that means if B of V V is 0 for all V that implies B is 0. So, that forces that there should exist at least one V such that this is true. Okay. So, let us fix such V and then we will define V n to be V divided by alpha where alpha is just a square root of one of the square root of this B V V. Okay. So, where alpha satisfies alpha square equal to B V V and it exists because we are working over complex numbers. Now, it is immediate that B of V n comma V n is equal to 1 because this is exactly B of V V divided by alpha square. So, which is 1. Okay. So, we have this uh, natural vector. So, what one can do? One can take the perpendicular of that with respect to B. So, basically it is a subspace those vectors W in V such that B of W V n is 0. Now, since the form is symmetric, so uh, this is same as B of V n comma W and since the form is non-degenerate and then we have chosen V n such that B of V n V n is 1 and looked at looking at the only the perpendicular of that. So, this is indeed n minus 1 dimensional subspace. This is n minus 1 dimensional subspace. Not only that, when you restrict B to this uh, V n pair, okay. so let us call it W. So, rest the restriction of B to this W is again non-degenerate. That is because we have we are looking at the perpendicular of V n with respect to B. Okay, this is easy to see. So, now we have this non-degenerate again symmetric form if you take restriction will be symmetric again. So, you have a symmetric plus non-degenerate form on W. So, by induction we will have a basis of W satisfying the required property, satisfying the required property. So, that implies that if you just adjoin V n with this basis, then that satisfies the required property. So, this way we prove that uh, we have a basis such that B of V i V j is exactly delta i j. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at uh, the second statement. Uh, so, B is being uh, G invariant. So, that is by definition just simply we can write that in terms of the basis element. So, the basis element uh, that uh, we just fix it from that uh, the first statement. So, if we take B x v i v j. So, this is going to be exactly minus b v i x v j okay. and this should be true for all i j and x in j. So, this is what g invariant means in terms of the basis element and this is if and only if obviously. So, now if you take uh, this additional condition that uh, B of V i V j being delta i j and just take this condition, this is the star. So, then you can easily see that uh, this condition star indeed can be rewritten as follows. The star can be rewritten as V j star x V i is equal to minus V i star x v j and of course, this v 1 star etcetera v n star it is the dual basis with respect to b inside v star. 
so v1 star etc vn star is the dual basis okay of course with respect to b in v star so that is why this statement uh, that we have in the star can be translated so this is just translated like this so this is the condition for the uh, the matrix of x being element of s by n nothing else okay so basically what this condition says if i look at j i th entry of the matrix x okay of the matrix of x of course with respect to the basis v1 etc vn so that is going to be exactly is the negative of the ijth entry of again the same matrix let's call it uh, x uh, b dash where b dash is v1 etc vn so that means the matrix x b dash is inside s y n so that's the meaning of being in s y n so this proves that uh, if you start with uh, symmetric non degenerate bilinear form then you will be able to always find a basis such that uh, this condition is satisfied and one can actually translate gene variant being the matrix representation of these elements with respect to that basis lying in s y n okay so now uh, we can actually go back to this uh, natural isomorphism that we have in between uh, uh, v star ten tensor v star and then the bilinear forms so this is naturally isomorphic to home v v star and then which is naturally isomorphic to bilinear forms so this is all g module isomorphisms okay so now there are some immediate uh, operations that one can for perform on the tensors okay so if you just uh, do that we can actually ask what it corresponds to inside this uh, bilinear forms okay for example one can flip uh, two tensors okay if we take v tensor w then it can be flipped to w tensor v so there is this s2 action so then we can ask what it corresponds here in the bilinear forms okay so basically if i take f tensor f dash this is the simple tensor then one can see that this corresponds to a bilinear form that is defined using this bf dash so this is exactly the bilinear forms so which is defined from v cross v to v v cross v to c as follows so this is bff dash defined on v v dash to be just f of v times f of v dash so there is this natural bilinear form that is associated with this simple tensor f tensor f dash so this is again easy to see okay i will leave it as exercise so now you have this natural flip okay if we take this v uh, sorry so let's take this uh, v tens v star tensor v star to v star tensor v star so we have this flip map okay f f dash goes to f dash tensor f so what this corresponds to okay so if you think about it this actually indeed corresponds to taking the bilinear form to its transpose so you take the bilinear form b and then send it to its transpose how the transpose is defined the transpose is defined to be b transpose v comma v dash is just exactly equal to b of v dash v okay so that is the definition of transpose okay so this flip indeed just does this so this is again uh, very easy to write down so now uh, if you just look at uh, uh, this uh, the decomposition of v star v star so this we already seen that this is actually indeed 
as a G module. So, there is this natural decomposition as a G module. This is indeed isomorphic to sim 2 of V star direct sum the alt 2 of V star. Okay. So, now uh, if we take the corresponding things inside the bilinear forms, then what the sim 2 should correspond and then what this uh, alt 2 should correspond. If you think about it, so naturally the sim 2 corresponds to what called symmetric bilinear forms, the space of symmetric bilinear forms and that is easy to define and then this all 2 corresponds to the space of skew symmetric bilinear forms. Okay, all these things are very easy to verify, I will leave it to you to check. Okay. Again this decomposition is a G module decomposition okay, that is again uh, very easy to verify. Okay, so, we will actually continue with the uh, bilinear forms uh, in the next class. So we want to actually kind of construct uh, many interesting uh, family of uh, uh, G invariant bilinear forms and then uh, we will use that later uh, to actually prove the existence of Casimir element uh, in the in in the in SLN okay. and then we have, we have already seen that the existence of Casimir element actually gives some element in the the center of the universal mapping algebra or it actually commits with the action of SLN that is good enough for us and then we will use that information to prove actually complete reducibility for finite dimensional representations of SLN. So, so that is why this uh, theory of bilinear forms becomes very important for us. Okay, I will stop here, we will continue in the next class. Thank you.